So it's my Saturday and today I am starting off with Squiata on the lift again. And uh, I ordered some parts for her on Monday. They're supposed to arrive today, so I'm preparing for them. And uh, I'm not gonna tell you just yet what it is, but I have already uh, replaced them once. So maybe that'll be a little clue for you. All right, well, I'm still waiting on my parts to show up. And since I've already taken out the parts I needed to, my project has kind of changed course and I am pulling off my brand new valve cover because I'm going to get that Ford valve cover that I got installed. And uh, I'm just getting it painted right now. And it's coming out pretty nice. One more coat of paint, a couple coats of clear, a couple hours in the sun, and I think uh, it'll be ready to go on there. So um, yeah, we're just waiting for the FedEx truck right now. So hopefully it gets here soon. Turns out that taking off this valve cover is uh, ending up being a good thing because uh, lo and behold, as I removed it, I come to find that uh, when I installed it, I ended up uh, letting a part of the gasket pop out right here and it folded over and pinched it, cut it in half. It was leaking oil. And um, yeah, so I'm off to the store to get a new gasket and gonna let that paint dry on the new valve cover. And hopefully we'll, we'll get it installed here in the next couple hours. I am going to have to make a bracket that's going to hold the cam sensor, which is going to sit right up here because the uh, new valve cover does not have a cover for this portion. But I think that'll be fairly straightforward. I think I heard the FedEx man. Let's go check. False alarm. But I think the paint's pretty well dry on our valve cover here. So um, ready to drop that guy on. About ready to throw this guy on there. Be quite a nice change from this. And I have already started making the um, bracket that's going to hold the uh, cam sensor. So it just needs to be notched and then uh, make another piece. But uh, first I'm going to throw this on. So we got the valve cover installed. And um, all I got to do now is make my bracket. It's going to run from here and wrap around and hold that cam sensor and we should be about wrapped up here is my uh, first part of the bracket for the cam sensor that i've cut out of an uh, eighth inch sheet of aluminum got it bolted up to the valve cover and now i believe what i'm gonna do is use the bung off of this valve cover so i'm gonna go ahead and like take an angle grinder and hack off uh, all of this right here and then I will bolt my bracket on to here weld it to this and then cut this out the rest of the way and it should be pretty dang close to where I need it to be so that's what we're gonna do let's see what happens all right if you're easily offended by destroying Mazda valve covers you might want to turn away right now because I'm about to put it through the bandsaw Okay, so now I can um, bolt my bracket onto this valve cover and uh, it should sit right on, on this uh, part from my measurements, but if it doesn't, we can do a little uh, shaving and make it work. So first thing I'm gonna do is clean this up so that it'll be ready to be welded. All right, so it's not sitting all the way down because we are making contact here. So I think what I'm gonna go ahead and do is maybe bend this tab upwards a little bit maybe maybe trim the tab actually but you can see we got a pretty nice fit so far i found a couple nuts that fit on these bolts tightened them up and we've got a pretty good fit here so i'm gonna go ahead and weld this together and then we'll cut it out we have success so now i'm gonna just go ahead and throw it back in the bandsaw and cut through here, clean it up a little bit, and get this bolted on. And here we have it. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it up a little bit cleaner and um, also get off all that burnt up paint because it's pretty nasty looking, but I think we're good to go. There she is. Ready to rock, let's see what happens. It's looking good, I think we're gonna be all right. 
far as that cam sensor goes. And um, valve cover's looking good too. I think the uh, sealant's probably almost dry, so about ready to fire this thing up and uh, see if that cam sensor is indeed in the correct position. Uh, I am still waiting for those parts from FedEx, and uh, I can't actually I, I can't start it until those come. So we're kind of stuck for the moment. I'll go check the porch again. All that work just to get a little Ford emblem. Oh well, I think it looks killer. Well, guess what decided to show up two days late and on a Sunday? The package we've been waiting for, uh, and I uh, guess I can finally spill the beans on what's inside. It is. A shift boot and new motor mounts uh, yeah these were probably the worst decision uh, I could have made for this car uh, they might be okay on a convertible where you don't have a roof over your head but it was making literally screws everywhere back out of the car so um, I'm going back to a Miata mount it is a competition one which is supposed to be a little bit stiffer but it's still made of rubber so Hopefully it'll eliminate all of those horrible vibrations and uh, feel a lot better again because it was horrible before. So let's get these parts thrown on and get this thing on the road again. So of course, me and all my infinite wisdom, uh, when I installed these mounts, I threw away the original mounts and the hardware that installs them to the motor mount and also to the chassis. So, um, of course, these are not the same size. And uh, I thought I was gonna have to run to the store and get some uh, nuts that would work. And then uh, I just happened to remember that I have this box of nuts that I picked up a couple weeks back because I put a brake switch for a 2000 Miata in Evet to operate the brake lights. And it just so happens that this M10 by 1.25 that uh, is the thread on the uh, brake switch is the exact same thread for these motor mounts so i lucked out a little bit on that one i thought it was pretty awesome and i happened to find a couple of locking washers laying around as well so i don't have to go to the store perfect fit i'm gonna try the passenger side first and um i remember this one was a bit of a challenge with an oem sized mount so hopefully we won't have too much trouble cramming it in there because i know it for sure we won't go down from the top so here we go all right we got the passenger side in i didn't have to dis disassemble it at all but i did have to jack the engine up quite a bit you can see it's touching the strut bar and uh we uh, just gotta get the driver's side in now and tighten these bolts up and we'll be ready to roll all right so this is how i'm making life easy it's nothing fancy it's just an electric impact gun with a bunch of extensions a swivel and a 916 socket the swivel is because we can't get direct shots to every bolt but it's still In those uh, motor mounts. Touchdown. Squiata's so low that I kind of have to kick the arms out from under her. But uh, it's not too painful of a process. All right, I'm just gonna get the uh, shifter boots installed. And right, so I took the old shifter boot off a while back because it was completely rotted out anyways, and I just never got around to reinstalling it. And once again, I lost the hardware. Um, the one awesome thing about Miatas, and probably all Mazdas in general, is that they only use like three sizes of hardware. And uh, that, that was kind of the point I was trying to, to make earlier 
um, talking about the motor mount bolts and how much of a coincidence it was. But uh, as you can see, this is one of the old valve cover bolts. And I'm just trying to find out what size these bolt holes are before I walk all the way into the garage to my parts bin from when I stripped this car. And sure enough, this M10 bolt, same thread pitch and everything. So now I just need to go grab four M10 bolts and we'll be ready to go. Box of parts, actually it's just hardware that I kept when I stripped um, the original Miata that I bought. And I also have one for the Squire when I strip that. And I have another one for Yvette. I have one for all my cars actually. So it always comes in handy. Okay, so for the inner boot. Oh wow. Yeah, when I uh, initially pulled the shifter out of the transmission there, she squirted oil everywhere, including on the lens and all over the camera. So that's what that was. But uh for the inside shift boot here on a Miata, I went ahead and just cut the old one off with a razor and pulled the uh, metal ring up over the top. And from what I'm reading online, if we just take a little bit of this fluid here and rub it inside this grommet here, this guy should just slide right over the shift stick and, and sit down. Maybe we should get a little bit more lubrication on there first and take off this tape. That stuff was not fun. Okay. Put a little bit more on the inside. And this is just the transmission fluid, obviously. And hopefully that makes it slick enough. It just should... Right over, yeah, there it goes. Took two hands, but got the job done. And just reinstall the bolts. No more leaky transmission. All right, now we can throw on our new outer shift boot, or I guess large shift boot, you would call it. First, I, well, I guess we don't need that ring anymore. That was a part of the old shift boot. Um, yeah, I think it goes this way. Here's our new boot bolts that I scavenged. I feel like there should be a metal trim ring around this or something, but it doesn't seem to have one. Spin the shift knob back on, and we are ready to go for a test drive again. One of the other reasons why I swapped back to the um, rubber motor mounts is because my original reason from for installing those solid mounts was that the engine was moving too much and it was causing the exhaust hangers to break. <laughs> And uh, instead of just thinking I should install flex pipes, uh, that was my solution, but I have since grown smarter and now hopefully our ride will be a little bit more comfortable. I'm about ready to fire this thing up, see what happens. Please start. I drove for about an hour and um, almost all the vibration issues are gone. The only thing that is a slight downside of going back to a rubber mount is the fact that 
It is a little bit more difficult to shift when you're in high RPM. It was really smooth with those solid mounts, but you know what? I'll uh, push the stick a little bit harder and not deal with all those vibrations any day of the week. So we're back online for now. We'll catch you guys.